Down to the docks, Jap Jap Frotto. I think so, no. I think so, yes. Get him, boys. What's the matter, Mama? The old man acting up again? How you talk? What do you say? My husband is a very good man. What's all this? What's all this? Relax. Where am I? Home. To be sure. The Arduna's in, Joe. Well, what of it? No curry corn, no sardine, no peaches, no corned beef. And no cigarettes. On your feet, mate. Fall in. <laughs> wait, wait. Much too early in the morning for life, Burton. Right your chin. Oh, well, if I must, I must. You want my passport, don't you? Yes, ma'am. My husband and I usually use the same passport. We have separate ones this time, in case I should wish to visit the other island while he's working. I wonder why it must rain. Doesn't it ever stop? Yes, ma'am. A little more efficiency, and we wouldn't be kept waiting so long. Have your landing cards and passports ready for you. Wait just a minute. There you are. Landing cards and passports ready for you. Thank you. Just put it down, please. By the way, officer, I was wondering, what does Pongo Pongo mean? I don't think it means anything at all, sir. Then it's certainly well named. Unusual weather, of course. <laughs> of course. What will it be like in a pier? Unusual. Welcome to Ponga Ponga, Mr. Davidson. Thank you, but we'd only be here for an hour or two. We're taking this school this afternoon for a pier. Not this afternoon, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sir. Thank you. Have your landing cards and passports ready for 
What's the matter, Alfred? Has anything happened? Unwelcome news. We cannot sail for a pier this afternoon. Not sail today? Why? One of the sailors aboard the schooner has come down with cholera. We cannot start until it is certain that none of the rest of the crew are affected. It may mean a delay of several days. I think I prefer the cholera. But where can we stay? At the general store. Hey. 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 Now there's Mr. Horn now. Hey. Mr. Horn. Hey. Well, upon my soul, this is a treat. How do you do, Mrs. Davidson? Greetings, Mr. Horn. Our poor island is honored. Doctor and Mrs. McPhail, Mr. Horn. How do you do? You're leaving soon? Well, the schooner for a pier is delayed on account of the cholera. We shall have to ask you to put us up. That's tough luck. Uh, for you folks, I mean. Can nothing be done? Barely possible. I can persuade the governor to make an exception in our case. I'm going to see him now. Hey, Joe, if my guests will pardon me for a few minutes, they shall have my personal escort to the hotel. What's the matter, Joe? If anything I hate, it's reformers. Huh? So that's what's the matter with them. Yeah. You'd better watch yourself while that lovely couple is on the island. They'd break your back to save your soul. What's his badge? An investigator of native condition. A professional reformer. He wields more influence in the South Seas than the sun, the planets, and the American government. <laughs> The voice is yet to come. Pearls of wisdom. The voice is yet to come. Pearls of wisdom. Now look here. You may take the British lion by the tail. You may twist it. You may jerk it. You may yank it. And you may tie it in a big bow knot. But dash it all, you can't pull it out by the roots. I say, can't you take a joke? <laughs> Hello, lads. Boys, I want you to meet Thompson. Sadie, meet the boys. Boys. And this is Mr. Orn. Mr. Horn, your climate's bum. Sorry, Sadie, it's the best we got. Oh, I'm not blaming you. Say, what's this about the delay? How long am I booked for this bird, do you know? Well, I'd compose myself for a two-week stay. Well, that being the case, what can't be helped can't be helped, as the saying goes. That job in the field keep all right, Sadie, so I shouldn't worry about it. Oh, I never worry, little one. Make the best of things today, because it can't be worse tomorrow. Besides, I like the boys here. Hello, handsome. When did you leave Kansas? <laughs> <laughs> she got you that time, kid. Shut up, you hyena. He's very shy, miss. Don't mind him. Play off, sailor, or I'll swap the deck with you. Oh, don't hurt him, handsome. I came from Kansas once myself. As fast as I could hope it. <laughs> Hiya. Fine. Very pleased to meet a lady. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Better look out, miss. He's laughing the butt. Had too close there. Act like that had too much on. <laughs> oh, she is a one. Lads, allow me to inform you that Sadie is a bit of all right. So you'll find Sadie someplace to sleep, won't you, Joe? With pleasure. And now, shall we discuss our sordid business matters? Now, uh, you know how it is when you're traveling a bit short. You see, Sadie left Honolulu a bit sudden like. She's a good kid, although she's down in the luck a bit. Now, she can't pay over a dollar a day for her room, and you've got to take care of her that, will you, Joe? Yeah, I was telling the quartermaster here I'd board myself. I got a bur burner with me, and besides, I don't need so much. Oh, that'll be all right. Mrs. Horn will take care of you. Well, here's Bubbles. <laughs> I hear life's terrible back home in the States now. How so? Everybody being made to behave. Yes. We live in the day of the new commandment. Thou shalt not enjoy thyself. 
I saw it coming 20 years ago. That's why I left Chicago. I wanted peace. Gad, I found it too. Friend, you behold here the last remnants of an earthly paradise. That's my quarrel with reformers. They won't let it alone. Yes, I can readily see how a reformer might feel a little out of place here. Uh, sort of like a school mom waking up in a harem. <laughs> <laughs> you remember what we were talking about the other night? Have you told Dr. McPhail yet? You mean about the marriage customs and the moon dancing? Yes. What did he say? Well, he never says very much, but I'm sure he thought it was perfectly awful. I'll take these islanders, Doctor. They're naturally the happiest, most contented people on Earth. They ask nothing of life except to be allowed to eat and sing and dance and sleep. Thinking gives them a headache. The trees and the sea gives them all the food they want so they don't have to fight. They're satisfied with their gods of wind and wave. And along comes Mr. Davidson and tells them they're lost souls. They've got to be saved whether they want to be or not. Too bad man couldn't develop a soul without losing the Garden of Eden. <laughs> You're a philosopher, Doctor. No, I just look on. Ditto, brother. And I guess we both see the joke. <laughs> <laughs> and now, welcome to Villa Horn. He's new here, and besides, his eyesight's bad. Yeah, I know. His is bad, and yours is good. But mine's better, and I'm taking handsome. You boys can pick up those packages and tag along and back if you like. But don't get run over. That's done it. The jackass said, no, not now. It's too hot. But in the cool of the evening, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Moses on a mountaintop. So this is the sunny South Seas. What a place. Nothing but quiet and mud. <laughs> Farewell, pretty ones. Farewell. You ain't looked like that since our first auto ride. <laughs> Take that stuff and put it down anywhere, boys. Well, I guess my dear me looking neat and chipper when I get to a pier shop. Oh, I shouldn't worry about that, Sadie. With all this heat, you'll soon be as dry as a blotting pad. Oh, she cat again. She cat again. That's I should worry and Jap buttercup. Miss McPhail, tomorrow you and I must sew the mosquito netting. Or the nights will be unendurable. Why not sew them today? I have no fancy for being eaten up tonight. I prefer not to do any sewing on the Sabbath. It would be different if one were indecently exposed by a tear in one's clothing, for instance. But under the circumstances, it might be a very bad example for the natives. Suppose I'll find a pretty slow down the pier, won't I, Grandpa? Things ought to brighten up considerable after you get there. Oh, Mr. Horace! <laughs> <laughs> Say, I thought you'd been thirsty enough to locate it by instinct. Here, I'll look. There's the shark, Kentucky refugee. Oh, ah, ah. Who's well, got a corkscrew? <laughs> Here you are, Sadie. <laughs> Thanks, Wally. Well, boys, let's dip the beat. Well, now, ain't that a beautiful sight? After you, Art's delight to me, Gizzard. I'll find a glass for you, Miss Thompson. What for? Down the hatch. Now, there's a lady after me own art. <laughs> Friend of mine slipped me there just before I left on Lula. Not that you'll need it, Sadie, said he. And right he was, Sadie. You're not the type that needs hooch to pep you up. Ah, I was born hooch. Holy Willie, look at this. The Wabash Blues. Music and a nip of liquor. That's what a rainy day is for, says I. Can you dance, Hanson? No, Miss Thompson. I'm a club foot. I never could twist my legs right. Well, I'll learn you before I leave. That's a threat. Quartermaster here's a great little stepper. You'll see him shake a shoulder. For one of his brains in years, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Come on, Ethelbert. Let's show these island boys how hip meets hip in the gay cafes of Honolulu. Right, though. Let's have a go at it. Here, bark my cabbage. Now, nothing too fancy now. Nope. <laughs> Take them up wide and put them down easy. That's it. The word to remember is glide. That's the stuff, Betsy. I think that I'd like. It is the rhythm that comes with devotion. Come on, now, glide. Ah, boy. Young woman. You got the swing now, Betsy. Young woman, have you no respect for the Lord's day? What? This is so.
Sunday, young woman. Were you speaking to me? I am simply reminding you that this is the Sabbath. Sabbath? Yes, that's right, Walter. I say this must stop. Do you hear me? I say, my mother, we're disturbing you. Whether I am being disturbed or not is of no consequence. There are six days in the week to dance that you must dance. Mr. Horne, is this sort of thing general in your store? Well, it's general store, ma'am. Oh, enough said. Complaints registered. Let's go to my private suite if you've no objection, Mr. Horn. No objection as far as I'm concerned. Come on, Ethelbert. Come on, boys, we're moving. You bring the records, handsome, and you the hoops of them. Drop in later if you feel like a Mr. Horn. Always glad to see you. Who is that young woman? Her name, ma'am, is Thompson, as far as I know. I mean, what is she? I didn't inquire. She was on the Arduino, wasn't she? I am aware she was. I am afraid Mr. Davidson will not like this at all. I've argued it out with the governor, but there's nothing to be done. That means ten days here. Two weeks, probably. Well, I've prepared for the worst and taken rooms for us upstairs. Two weeks with nothing to occupy us. This enforced an activity is likely to prove wearisome. The only thing to do is to portion out the day to different occupations. Certain hours of the day we will set aside for study. Certain hours for uh, exercise, rain or shine. And two certain hours will go for uh, recreation. Recreation may be hard to find. Someone appears to have found it. It's a person from the second class, exceedingly common, very nicely dressed. In fact, she looks rather fast to me. Perhaps you noticed her on the boat. I met her. Rather a good-natured girl on a waiting position in a pier. Kind of a girl. Oh, just an ordinary human being, not over prosperous, I should say. I think it's perfectly outrageous for her to keep that music up, don't you? She wishes to play her own machine. It is not our right to interfere. By the way, Doctor, we can visit the Naval Hospital tomorrow if you think it would interest you. It's a busman's holiday, but I'll go. The Arduna must be going out before her scheduled time. I hate to see her go. She seemed to be our last link with home. So long, my darling. Bye, boy. You better hurry, little money. You're going to get left. Right, though, Sadie. I'm sorry I can't stay for lunch, but I'm off. But I hope I'll see you again sometime because you're a good kid and I like you. I'll tell you what you do. You write me a nice little loving postcard. Will you? Right, though, a nice little postcard. And once you write it, just drop it in the ocean. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, uh. Sayonara. I'm off. <laughs> I appear in the frozen north in the land of the Eskimo. Goodbye, Mr. Davidson. I got stranded on the Mary Jane, and I guess I never will get home again. Goodbye, Mr. Davidson. <laughs> the queen of is named Gumdrop Sal, and she's very nice. Goodbye, Mr. Davidson. <laughs> to me, oh, the queen's in rock. Hello, Mr. Davidson. You'd better get aboard, Quartermaster, as fast as you can. Right, though. <clears throat> well, goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye, folks. <laughs> the queen up is named Gumdrop Sam, and she's very nice to me. The king's in wrong, but I'm in right. The king stays out most every night. And the nights are six months long. <laughs> goodbye, Mr. Davidson. <laughs> Come on, the tea's getting cold. <laughs> How long has this been going on? All morning. Where did those Marines come from? They just appeared from nowhere in her wake. If we're to have a fortnight of this sort of thing, I don't know what we shall all feel like at the end of it. What's the matter, Alfred? Of course, it just occurred to me the woman's out of Ivole. The thought came to me when I first saw her, but I didn't dare speak of it. What's Ivole? The, uh... <clears throat> Plague spot of Honolulu. That long haired guy in there just gave me the filthiest look. What are you going to do, Alfred? You expect me to do? I'm not going to have this house turned into a brothel. I'm going to stop it. She has a number of men in there. It's going to be rather rash to go in now. You know Mr. Davidson very little. If you think that fear of physical danger is going to stop him in the performance of his duties. Stop! This has gone far enough! <laughs>
boys are scared. Oh, go away. The next time I'll get sore. There'll be no next time. When you bust into a lady's room, you ought to get someone to introduce you, fella. Fall in, sweetheart. <laughs> Alfred. Alfred. I don't know what he'll do. All I know is I wouldn't be in that girl's shoes for anything in the world. <laughs> What time of day is it? Going on six. Whole hour to put in before dinner. Been to the hospital today? No. Davidson too busy. Nothing left to do but twiddle my thumb. Yes. Why twiddle? In <laughs> forced idleness makes them rested. <laughs> Back in Illinois, where I was raised, it was generally believed that a person who stayed away from business more than one working day in every ten years was a loose, dangerous, and depraved character. <laughs> you don't see a bottle around here anywhere, do you, Doc? Have a drink. Not just now. <laughs> Though the offer still holds, there's more in the store. Now, what was I saying? The subject, I believe, was the evil of too much work. So it was. There's a lot too much misdirected energy in this world, Doctor. Are you speaking biographically or autobiographically? Confidentially. That was a mighty foolish thing Davidson did. That girl Sadie Thompson wasn't doing any harm. Mm, I see what you're getting at. He's been after me for letting her have her own. It's your own house, isn't it? Yes, but people like that have got a lot of influence. Once they get down on a traitor, he might as well shut up shop and quit. Surely he isn't asking you to turn this poor girl out into the rain. No, not exactly. He knows there'd be no place for her to go except a native hut. Not but what I think she'd do better to go to one than stay here, now that he's on to her. But just what does he want you to do? Well, he said he wanted to be fair to her and to me. But he wouldn't stand for any doings. What do you think, Horn? Is she uh, out of Ivalé, that Honolulu place? I don't know and I don't care. What if she is? We've all crossed thresholds we don't brag about. Hello, Doctor. Good evening. Good evening, Joe. Ah, the Mary Wolf is right sure to carry on, don't they? Why, I... Well, let's don't mention the heat. Just got around to get myself dressed, and it's most time to go to bed. I've been playing solitaire all afternoon, trying to decide what to have for supper. Tuna fish or beans? <laughs> and beans won. Then I played beans against tamales, just for something to do. What tamales got to say? Got any can of tamales, Mr. Horn? I guess so. Poke around until you find them. Oh, no hurry. Lots of time. And there's so much time lying loose around this island. Somebody ought to bottle it up and send it back where they need some. You don't mind, do you, seeing we're here all by ourselves? If I sit down and have a skag with you boys? Not at all. Have a drink. Thanks. You haven't seen that Marine sergeant around that I call handsome, have you? No, he hasn't been around today. Well, it don't matter. I just want to ask him something. You do seem... Tell him to drop around this evening, will you? Uh, you know what I said to you last night? As friend to friend, get me. I'd go slow on company for a day or two. 
I see. Till Davidson gets over his terrible experience, huh? Do you think I've been to blame for what happened? I ain't blaming anyone. Pushing himself in on us that way. What harm are we doing? Just talking and singing? Not a word of thought out of the way when bang goes the door and in he comes. Knocking the phonograph over. Here I says, quit that. Then he began to bawl us out. Well, the boys naturally thought he'd gone crazy, so they put the skids under him. I know. Anyway, I wouldn't attract his attention any more than I had to just now. <laughs> well, if it comes to that, he'd better not attract mine. I've never known anyone like him, and I don't want him. Say, what kind of an egg is the governor of this place? Do you know? Mm, the governor? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, a pretty good sort, I'd say. Why? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to know. That's all. The nerve of him. Going to see the governor about me. Do you ever hear the like of it? How do you know he went to see him about you? O'Hara told me. He's reported O'Hara to his officer for drinking. Oh, I don't want that boy to get any trouble through me. Oh, I guess O'Hara can take care of himself. Yeah, well, so can I if it comes to that. Miss Thompson, I'd be careful. Of what? I'd be careful for my own good. You can't tell. Give me strength. How many times have I got to tell you that old sin buster don't mean a thing to me? If he minds his own business, I'll mind mine. And if he's looking for trouble, I'll see that he gets it, that's all. Mr. Davidson's opinion of people is never wrong. Oh, really? He thinks to hear the winds of reform whistling down the chimney. Whereat the low huzzy frolics off to buy our supper. Where do you keep your can of mollies, old partner? If there's any left, you'll find them on that shelf by the door. Anyway, there's no ill feeling between any of us, is there? Huh? Well, I wouldn't say the doc had been exactly chatty. Life just teems with quiet fun. Has Mr. Davidson returned yet? Not yet, Mr. Davidson. How's the headache? Any better? Very little. Uh, that girl, Miss Thompson. I have an idea she's sorry for what happened. If she knew what she'd really done, she'd be sorrier still. Mr. Davidson has a wonderful heart, and no one has ever gone to him in trouble without being comforted. But he has no mercy for sin. Did you find your tamale, Sadie? Yeah. Don't look around. Here she comes now. Yes, here I come now. Why shouldn't I come now? See here, let's settle this. I'm paying for my own room here. Isn't that so, Mr. Horn? That's so, Miss Thompson. Will you kindly tell your guests then that I have just as much right here as they have? No, Miss Thompson. There isn't anyone saying you haven't. Don't look at her. Don't speak to her. No, I wouldn't if I was you. She's brazen. Outrageous. Don't. You'll only harm yourself. Oh, it's foolish, I know. But it's the first time I've ever had words with a woman of that sort. Well, there's one comfort. We shan't have to suffer this sort of thing much longer. Mr. Davidson is attending to that. Hello, Davidson. Alfred, please change your wet clothes. No, I shall be going out again, probably. Again? Oh, Alfred, you must try to get a little rest. Alfred, you must. My wife, like Martha, thou hast troubled thyself about many things, but mostly about me. I do not know what I should ever have done without my dear wife. In the early days of our island work, it was she who gave me the strength and courage to go on. Alfred, just before you got back, that girl spoke to me. She jeered and screamed at us. What are you going to do about her? Been a ready bond by. Strange how one's thoughts run to food when there's nothing else to think of. As it happens, there is a great deal to think of. This Thompson woman you say spoke to you? Yes, she thrust herself in upon us with no insults. Mm, the governor tells me the affair is no concern of his. But if I find her incorrigible, I shall see to it that he acts. 
I'm afraid he has no backbone. I suppose that means he won't do exactly as you want, whatever it is you want him to do. I only want him to do what is right. There may be differences of opinion as to what is right. If a man had a gangrenous foot, would you have patience with anyone who hesitates to cut it off? Gangrene is a matter of fact. And is not evil? To me, it has always seemed a matter of opinion. Anyway, the poor thing will only be here until the boat for a pier goes. And after she gets to a pier? I can't see how that concerns us. That's where you and I differ, Doctor. I think it would be best if I spoke to her. But, Alfred, why do you see her? I cannot act until I have given her every chance. She'll only insult you. Let her insult me. Let her spit on me. She has an immortal soul. And I must do all in my power to save her. Miss Thompson, I want to talk to you. I'm eating my supper. I'll wait until you're through. Well, I guess the supper can stand by if it's important. Miss Thompson, I have come to make you a gift. The most precious gift that life can offer. You want to give me something? Yes, I want to give you something. I guess I'm not following. The gift I offer is free. I don't know why I get all this attention from you, Mr. Davidson. I guess you mean well, but... I think I can worry along as I've been worrying along for these several years. I go my own way and don't ask any favors. Those who have the key of salvation offered them and fail to open the door must be destroyed. Oh, I see what you mean. But I won't get destroyed. I always make out one way or another. That's all, Mr. Davidson. I'll go on eating. I'm hungry. You are hungry for the bread of the spirit. You are thirsty for the waters of eternal life. You mean right by me, Mr. Davidson, and I'm grateful. Especially after what happened the other day. You know, just between ourselves, I had a feeling you were laying to get me for that little trouble we had. I felt awful bad about it, and I've been wanting to apologize. I see you are mistaking me, but I do not think willfully. They all said you were sore, but... Well, I didn't think a man as big as you could hold a grudge over a little misunderstanding. This is all beside the point, Miss Thompson. The thing that concerns me now is that you be given your chance before I act. My chance for what? Your chance to be saved. Oh, I'm all right. Don't you worry about me a bit. You see, I'm a happy-go-lucky sort of a fella. It's true I'm broke now, but that don't worry me. I'll be all right as soon as I get to a pier. I got friends there. Yes, what sort of friends? Just friends. The girl I used to work with is there. And some American boys have opened up a sugar plant. She wrote me I could have a job as cashier. I'm pretty quick at figures. For some time you have lived in Honolulu, haven't you? What did you do there? Had a job. What kind of a job? Well, part of the time I had sort of a singing job. My voice ain't so bad if you don't listen too hard. Before you went away to Honolulu, where were you? Where'd I come from, you mean? Yes, where did you come from? Well... I was born in Kennesaw, Kansas, if that means anything. Ma and Pa got the California fever, so they sold the farm and bought a ranch just outside Los Angeles. I was about 15 then, I guess. And Ma died, and Pa and I didn't get along so well, so I went up to San Francisco. I worked there up until the time I went to Honolulu. What made you go away to Honolulu? Well, I don't know. Wanted a change, I suppose. Oh, you wanted a change. Well, Sadie Thompson, this gift I have to offer you, what are you going to do about it? Do about it? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. See here. I told you I wasn't asking anything from anybody. I can take care of myself. Up or down, in jack or broke, what's the odds? Wherever night overtakes me, that's my resting place. That's my way. Thank you, though, for your interest kind of you after what happened. I'm mighty glad John saw at me, because, well, I like to keep friends with everybody. 
Miss Thompson, I see I must be patient with you. I see I must try and make you understand my poor lost child. What happened the other day is of no importance. Do you imagine what you or those sailors said to me makes any difference? You sure are all to the good, Mr. Davidson. And I want to say this. Don't be afraid with it. I'll keep to myself. I know oil and water don't mix. Those ladies in your party won't even know I'm under the same roof with them. I'll be as quiet as a mouse. Honest, I will. Besides, I don't want to get any more black looks from them. Oh, no. You will get no more black looks from them, my poor child. They're only waiting for the moment when they can be your friends to help you with your burden. Oh, no. You don't know the ladies like I know them. You don't need a spyglass to see those ladies and you'll never be shipmates. This is your chance, Sadie Thompson. If you will accept your atonement without resentment or grief, the way will be found for you. I'll admit you've got me stalled. What are you driving at? What have I to atone for? Your life. Mr. Davidson, why do you worry about me? You have had your own soul and trust, and you have failed. It is my business to show you the way to redeem it. Haven't I anything to say about myself, then? You can choose but one of two paths. What's the second choice? Destruction. And who's going to destruct me? The powers which find no place for evil. And you? What are you going to do? Only my duty. Yeah, I know. You went to see the governor about me, didn't you? All right, Miss Thompson, I have been to see the governor. So all you said just now about letting bygones be bygones, calling quits on that bust up we had was just a bluff. Silent. Huh? Are you ready to put away your sins, to live a righteous and decent life, to pray for forgiveness? If you are not, be it on your own head. Hey, hey! I shall not let you go to a pier, Sadie Thompson. You are an evil woman. You have lived an evil life, and you have come here to carry your infamy to other places. You're a liar. Who do you think you are standing there calling me names? You deny that you have escaped from evil, eh? I've listened to you all I'm going to listen to. Now, you listen to me. You just told me I'd better be careful. Well, you'd better be careful yourself. Lay off me or I'll show you what it means when I start to get mad. It'll be worse for you if you don't. The devil in you is strong, my poor Sadie Thompson. Evil has claimed you as its own. You take care of your own evil and I'll take care of mine. I know what you want. You want another scalp. Well, you don't get mine. You don't fool me. You want to make me over your way, do you? Well, you just try it. This is your last chance, Sadie Thompson. Kneel with me and pray. Let go of me. Sadie Thompson, you are doomed. Ah, oh, you make me laugh. David. Young man, I should not come here if I were you. Why? You are likely to get into more trouble than you're in already. This isn't my first year away from home, ma'am. And I ain't been run over yet. Do you know what kind of a girl this Sadie Thompson is? Yes, ma'am. My advice to you is to keep away from bad company. Bad company present. You'll excuse this, won't you? Mr. Horn. What's the matter? You look low. Low? Maybe. It's this rain, I guess. Makes me jumpy. Makes me want to knock my head against the wall. It's worse when it don't rain. When the sun comes out for a minute, you think you're in a steam room. You ought to try getting out for a walk. I was out this morning. I went to see that half-caste family you told me about. You slammed the door in my face so fast, you'd have thought I had smallpox. Being an orphan's a wonderful thing. Sadie, please. You want to get me in a jam? OK, Joe. Thank you, Sadie. Listen to it. Don't it make you want to scream? When you do scream, what good does it do you? You haven't any strength left. You're hopeless. 
miserable. Don't talk like that, Miss Sadie. Don't sound like it. Oh, forget it. I'll get the fan clubs, I guess. I'll get over. You see, I just had a run-in with that Davidson. Yeah? Yeah. What about? He's not going to let me go to a pier, so he says. And anyone can see with two glass eyes that this side of the equator, he's in right and I'm in wrong. The only thing I can't figure out is what devil's trick he'll use to stop me. I don't see what he can do. Yeah, neither do I. But we don't play it with bells either of us. You know, there's something about that old crow that isn't human. He's deep, creepy. I guess it's his eyes. They seem to look right in me and know what you're thinking. Something tells me I'm going to need friends soon, Hanson. Far from home. You just keep your chin up. It'll be all right. Yeah, but it's not knowing what's going on. Being here alone. And this rain. I feel about so big. Like a kid feels in a bad dream. Things coming at you. You yelling for help and nobody hears you. Well, any time you call for help, I'm right here. Don't forget that. Thanks, handsome. Say, look -a here. If something should go wrong, that is, about you getting to a pier, what'll you do? You might as well make plans. What'll I do? You mean you're afraid something will go wrong? No, no. But if that old nose pusher gets around the governor somehow, and they do stop you somehow, what do you do? I don't know. Go back to the States, I suppose. No. There's no way they could make me go back, is there? I don't see how, unless you want to. Well, I don't want to go back to the States yet a while. Mightn't be bad to run back and see your folks. I haven't any folks. Going back to the States doesn't mean anything to me. Don't to me either. Why, what's the matter, Miss Sadie? I won't go back. They can't make me, can they? You don't want to go to Honolulu either, I suppose. No. But you could go to Sydney. Australia? What'd they do there? Work's easy to get. Living's cheap, they say. I'd head that way instead of a pier if I were you. You think I'd do better there? You'd never get much of anywhere in a pier. Grease spot of the world, they say. And hot, holy bilge water. I never thought of Sydney. Can I get that from here? There's a boat twice a month. I'm headed that way just as soon as I shed these hash marks. Yeah? That'll be a month and three days. What are you going to do there, Hanson? Going in the building business. Old shipmate of mine has a place and wants a partner. These three years, Lefty's been at me to get my discharge and come in with him. You'd like Lefty. Me and him joined the service same time 12 years ago. Oh, I'm glad you're fixed, Hanson. You ought to do fine. You know, two times Lefty and me joined over. When it comes to number three, Nick says he. Guess what I'm going to do, says Lefty. Well, I knew without guessing. So I stood up with him and the bride, and they shoved off to Sydney, me throwing the rice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you'll be glad to see him. If you should go to Sydney, Lefty and Maggie have put your wife what to do. Yeah, can't I just hear Lefty's wife yelping with joy at the sight of me? Uh, you haven't any cause to worry about Maggie. You two would get along swell. Baby boy, I know females. You don't. I got an idea what's on your mind. But Maggie ain't the kind of a dame you're meaning. She's square from the toes up. Funny thing, them that kick highest always seem to settle down harder. You mean this Maggie was sort of gay before Lefty came along? Lefty met her in Honolulu. They were both nuts over each other right from the start. It never mattered to either of them that they met in Evil Age. In Evelyn? Yeah. Knowing the worst to begin with isn't always the worst way to begin. Of course, if there's some reason why you're set for a pier, if, if there's someone you're wanting to see there, I, I wouldn't want to persuade you. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to a pier with any wild joy. Then there's another thing. If you go to Sydney now, I'll be hoping in sight in a few weeks. Not that that might mean so much to you, maybe. I haven't so many friends, handsome, but what I can do with one more. <laughs> you know, you're an awful funny fella, handsome. I guess I'm the dumbbell king, all right. Have 
Is there any kids? Who? Those friends of yours in Sydney? Oh, I was thinking of something else. Yep, two. How about it? Huh? How about what? Changing your route and going to Sydney instead. Sure. Why not? I guess no one can stop me from doing that. What a simp I was getting the wind up all over nothing. Here I was jumping with the shakes and nervous as a witch because that dismal time wouldn't let me go to a pier. Well, a pier my foot. It's Sydney for mine. What belong you want? Let go. Suck along to me. I may go. Right. It's for you. For me? Who's writing me a letter? It's from the governor's office. You better open it. I won't go back. They can't make me. There's reasons. I got some right. Tell them that. What's the matter? The governor's ordered me back to San Francisco. Now, don't get nervous. I'll tell you what you do. You go see the governor. Ask him as a favor let you stay here until the Sydney boat leaves. That'll only be three or four more days. Will he see me? Hurry up before he goes to supper. It's only a few steps. You want me to go with you? Yeah, will you wait? I get my coat. I'll make him with me. What? You low-down skunk. What have you been telling the governor about me? I've been hoping to have another talk with you, Miss Thompson. Why, you miserable snail snatcher. I wouldn't talk to you if you and me were the only two people left on earth. Why, you're so doggone mean it makes me sick even to look at you. That's what I think of you. Coming to me with all that guff you spill about salvation. Then going and having me deported on top of it. Why, you low living. Sadie. I'm wholly indifferent to the abuse you think fit to heap upon me. Filling the governor up with a lot of filthy lies about me. And now this comes, and I gotta beat it on the next boat. I'd hardly expect him to let you stay under the circumstances. Yeah, well, what did the governor know or care about me? You went and hauled your hooks into me. It's you that did it. You did it all. I don't want to deceive you, Miss Thompson. I urged the governor to take the only steps consistent with his obligation. Well, why couldn't you let me be? Was I doing you any harm? You may rest assured, if you had been, I would be the last one to resent it. You don't think I want to stay in this rain hole, do you? You are being given every opportunity of getting out. Come on, Sadie, don't say anymore. You do. I know you're kind. You dirty, two-faced mutt. I bet when you were a kid, you caught flies and tore their wings off. I bet you stuck pins in frogs just to see them wiggle and flap while you read them a lecture. I know you. Why, you tear the heart out of your grandmother if she didn't think your way and tell her you were saving her soul to something in front of her. You will be glad to hear that the governor has acted at last. He's a weak man. For days, he has shilly-shallied, saying it was none of his concern. I can readily see why. How did you convince him? I finally had to speak straight from the shoulder. The foundation that I represent in Washington is not entirely without influence. Miss Thompson will sail on the next boat that goes. How soon will that be? The Golden Gate is due here from Sydney next Tuesday. She will sail on that. Four days more. Are you ready? Well, that settled Sadie Thompson's hash, I guess. Mrs. Davison tells me she hasn't closed her eyes ever since that girl came to live under the same roof with her. <laughs> the founder of her religion wasn't so squeamish. Don't joke about such things. Please, Robert. Excuse me, Doc. Miss Thompson isn't feeling well. Will you see her for a moment? Certainly. She's right out here. Sorry, you're not feeling well. I'm well enough. Not really sick. O'Hara said that just because I had to see you. Yes, Miss I got to get back for inspection now. I'll see you later. Keep your chin up. Thanks, Hanson. Lucky meeting, Sarge. What's up? Hey, what are you been doing lately? You're booked for the break. That's right, Sarge. Fall in. Okay. I don't know exactly what I can do. Well, I thought maybe you wouldn't mind asking him if he'd let me wait and go to Sydney instead. It's only three or four days longer. 
I'll ask him. Tell him I can get work in Sydney. Straight stuff. Tell him I just can't go back to San Francisco now. There's reasons. Will you please? I'll do what I can. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Davidson. Where's the doctor? I want to speak to you about something. Shall I come up? No, I'll come right down. Tell him I ask his pardon. Tell him I'm sorry. Better get into your room now, Miss Thompson. Well, Doctor, what can I do for you? It's uh, about Miss Thompson. The governor has told her that if you have no objection, he will allow her to remain here until she can take the boat for Sydney. I'm sorry, Doctor, but it is useless to discuss the matter. It appears the girl has reasons for not wanting to return to San Francisco. I don't see that it makes any difference if she goes to Sydney instead. It's only a matter of a few days. Well, you mean this interference for the best, but my mind is made up. If you want to know what I think, I think you're harsh and tyrannical. I'm terribly sorry you should think that of me, Doctor. Believe me, my heart bleeds for that unfortunate young woman. But I cannot find it in my conscience to change my decision. However, if the governor wishes to do so on his own account, that is his business. He won't. And you know why. Uh, please don't bear any malice toward me because I cannot accede to your wish. I respect you very much, Dr. McPhail. And I should be sorry indeed if you thought ill of me. I have no doubt you have a sufficiently good opinion of yourself to bear mine with equanimity. Hi, Miss Thompson. I think I can do something. God bless you. Here to the Lord. The king's favor. Word. The name of the devil is very good. Let me get promised to come see you. Establish the promise of God. Let me tell you something. Mr. Davidson's long down B got to her. What's that? What are you saying? All the same, I know. He B got to her. What were you saying, Amina? You know? All the same, I know. He big or two of A witch doctor. A species of wizard, you perceive. Knew everything, saw everything. Lived by the power of thought. <laughs> A grill goat chop had no charm for him. When hungry, he simply ferreted out a devil and ate him up for tea. <laughs> oh, I cut it. I cut it. Talk, give me the willy. Let me have a drink, will you, Joe? That's Davidson up there, isn't it? Sounds like his voice. What's he saying? Amen. He said, Amen. Yeah, that stuff's jinx for I am, huh? Can't seem to feel it. Maybe the two is up to me. What's that the old jig does? Sees everything? Knows everything? You know, that's the kind of an eye Davidson has, all right. He looks right into you. He knows what you're trying to hide. Guess it wouldn't be any use to try and hide much from him, would it? Not much. What did he say? I'm sorry, Miss Thompson. That's all right. Thanks, Mr. Thompson.
I'm, I'm sorry for what I said to you today. For everything that's happened, I ask pardon. I guess my back is broad enough to bear a few hard words. You got me beat. I'm all in. Oh, don't make me go back to San Francisco, please. I'll go anywhere else you say. Why don't you want to go back there? Well, my folks live there, and I guess I don't want them to see me like this. I understood you had no people. I got a father. But you told me yourself your father did not live in San Francisco. Um, that's not the reason, Miss Thompson. What is the reason you don't want to go back there? I told you. No, no, you haven't told me. Well, it's this way. I'm trying to go straight now, and if I go back there, I can't go straight. What will prevent you from going straight if you really want to? There's a man back there that won't let me. Why won't he let you? He just won't. You see, it's this way. I'm scared he'll get me again. Who is this man? Uh, sort of a politician. Mm -hmm, I see. And you fear his influence, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's it. You see, he's bad and I'm scared of him. Does he need to know that you have returned? Oh, uh, he'll know. Oh, but, Miss Thompson, San Francisco is a big place. It should not be difficult for you to keep out of his way if you want to. Well, I'll, I'll have to get help once I get back, and the only people that'll help me are in with him. If you earnestly desire to go straight, it will not be necessary for you to go to your former friends for help. My foundation will help you until you are on your feet. This man you fear need never know you are in the city. Oh, he'll know, though. All the boats coming in are being watched. You mean to tell me that every boat coming into port will be watched on the chance that you are on it? Yes. Come, come, Miss Thompson. These evasions are getting you nowhere. Why are you afraid to return to San Francisco? I told you, because I can't go straight there. Shall I tell you why you're afraid to go back? This politician you fear is a politician in the uniform. He wears a badge. What you fear is the penitentiary. Oh, don't send me back, please. I'll be good. Honest, I will. Is that it, the penitentiary? But I was framed. I got away before they caught me. Gee, they'll nab me the minute I get off that boat. there will be three years for mine. Three years. Oh, give me a chance, will you? Just one chance. I'm going to give you the finest chance you've ever had. I, I don't have to go back, you mean? Yes, you will have to go back. You will sail for San Francisco Tuesday, as the governor has ordered. <laughs> if you are truly repentant, you will accept this punishment. You will offer it as the atonement for your sins. When you want me, Sadie Thompson, call me. I will come. At any hour of the day or night, when you need me, I will come. I shall be waiting for your call. Mr. Davidson, wait a minute. You're right, Mr. Davidson. I am bad, but I want to be good, only I don't know how. So, I'll tell you what. You let me stay here with you, and then you can tell me what to do. And no matter what it is, I'll do it for you. Can't stay here. You've got to go back. You've got to serve your time. You mean to say, if I repent and want to be good, I still have to go to the penitentiary? Yes, you've got to go. All right. You send me back there, and that's my finish. No, it will be your beginning. But I was framed, I tell you. Innocent or guilty, you have got to serve your sentence. It's the only way you can prove you are worthy of mercy. Innocent or guilty? What are you talking about? Where's your mercy? Oh, no. I guess that repentance stuff is off. Was it ever on, Miss Thompson? Whether it was or not, it's off now. You've got to go back to San Francisco. Straight orders from your private heaven, huh? Oh, no, Mr. Davidson. Your God and me could never be shipmates. And the next time you talk to him, you can tell him this for me, that Sadie Thompson is on her way to hell. Stop! This has gone far enough. Oh, no, it hasn't gone far enough. You've been telling me what's wrong with me. Now I'm going to tell you what's wrong with you. You keep yelling at me to be punished, to go back and suffer. How do you know what I've suffered? You don't know, you don't care, and you don't even ask, and you call yourself a Christian. Oh, Why, you're nothing but a miserable witch bird, and that's what you are. Name. You believe in torture. Thy kingdom come. You know you're big, and you know you're strong, and get the law on your side, heaven. and the power to hang me. Give All right. But I've got the power to stand here and say, you hang me and be damned to you. Trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, hear thou my prayers for this lost sister. Close thy ears to her wild and heedless word. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. my clothes? Everything's here. I'll be out in a few minutes. Everything goeth, everything returneth. Eternally rolleth the wheel of existence. Everything dieth, everything blossometh forth again. Eternally runneth on the year of existence. Thus spake Zarathustra. Ah, good old Nietzsche. You speak fine, Joe. What do you mean? Tomorrow she goeth. Thus ends that episode. <laughs> Salvation are more important to me now than anything else. I've got to go. If you aren't going to stop this day, then I personally would like to see it through. Oh, Perhaps, Doctor, you wouldn't mind escorting the ladies home. I must go. How is she? Not so good. Has she wondered why I haven't been around? No. Didn't you tell the old pelican that they had me in the brig? No, nope, she didn't ask. She didn't ask? No, nope, she didn't even inquire about you. I'm asking because the last time I seen her, we were pretty good friends. You don't suppose, do you, that she's had time to think about you or anything else? With Davidson getting her ready to go back to San Francisco. What's he been doing to her? Praying. Praying? Praying. That a beach with the some stuff, huh? 
Beached and delirious, I'd say. He took pretty good care to get rid of me before he started, didn't he? Well, I'll beat him to it tonight. How did you get out? Walked out. Mmm. What's it doing, O'Hara? You arouse my curiosity. If I was you, I'd ease off to bed with the old lady and not have any curiosity. Oh, you would, would you? And why would you do that? I'd do that so as I wouldn't be blamed for anything in case anything happened. Sounds like another row, Sergeant. The most unlucky day of my life, the day that Arduna came into port. Amina, clock out. I like my comfort. For five days now, this whole household is centered on that tormented Thompson girl in there. With Davidson and old Nick wrestling for her soul. It's got me nervous. Cheer up, it won't center around how much longer. What do you know about it, safe in a brig all week? There hasn't been such a casting out of devils since the first chapter of Exodus. The last vestige of mortal sin lurking in that poor critter's heart has been torn out. Sadie Thompson, who blew into my hotel a week ago, isn't anymore. Where do you see her? You aren't keeping anything from me, are you, Joe? Where do you see her, I say? She's like a victim they've got trussed up to sacrifice to some bloody idol. Yeah. It'll make you sick to look at her. Get her out for me. I'll tend to the rest of this. Gladly. My mind is blank, save for one fact. Tomorrow, Miss Sadie Thompson will be on the high seas. You bet she'll be. Miss Thompson, you're wanted. All right. Sadie, you look awful sick. I was wondering whether I'd see you before I left. You've been awful kind. I'll never forget it. I want to thank you. Look here, Sadie. How long will it take you to get packed? I'm pretty well packed now. That's good. Briggs and Hudson will be along any minute. Let her tote your bag. You hurry up now and get dressed as fast as you can. Get dressed? You're leaving this place tonight. My boat don't leave till tomorrow morning. Your boat's leaving tonight, and I'm going to see you get aboard her. I must wait for Mr. Davidson. He's going to see me on board. Mr. Davidson isn't going to see you off. He isn't? What's happened? Where is he? You're not going to San Francisco, that's what's happened. You're leaving here in a few minutes for the Samarkin Islands on the junk. You're to wait there until the Sydney boat comes along, then you're going to Sydney. But what do you suppose Mr. Davidson would say? He came back and found me gone. You know the old shouter better than I do. But I don't mind admitting that the sight of his face at that moment has slipped me considerable quiet fun. You've had a pretty bad time these last few days, I guess. Just forget them. It's mighty sweet and fine of you. Got all this trouble for me. Fine, fine, nothing. This ain't one small bit of what I'd like to do for you if I got the chance. You know, you're doing this sort of makes me want to cry. But... But what? I can't do it. Why can't you do it? I'm going through with what I've got to go through with. Are you afraid of Davidson? He'll never get hold of you again. I'll see to that. No, that isn't it. It'd be awful hard for me to make you understand what's come over me. I can't understand it myself, except that it's happened. Sadie, this sort of thing don't make you happy. You don't realize it ain't yourself. You got to forget Mr. Davidson and, and come with me. No, I couldn't. I couldn't. You don't know what you're saying. You haven't any idea what you're saying. They're not going to send you back there with no one to take care of you. In Sydney, in a couple of weeks, you'll, you'll have me. Remember what I told you about Lefty and Maggie? I won't listen. I won't listen. What's to hinder you repenting in Sydney as well as in San Francisco? 
if you've got to repent. Oh, you don't understand. I've got to go back and be punished for what I've been. What's that you're saying? When I get back to San Francisco, handsome, I've got to go to the penitentiary for three years. Mr. Davidson says it doesn't make any difference whether I was innocent or guilty of what they framed me for. He says it's the only way of letting me square myself. He says I've got to accept an unjust punishment by man as a sacrifice for my sin. Well, you listen to me. Get into your room and throw your clothes on as fast as you can. Let go of me. Let go. Don't you dare do that again. I want you to go away. Do you hear? Go away. Sadie, Sadie. I mean it. Go away. Oh, Sadie, listen, please. Oh, handsome, why can't you let me alone? Hear the boys, Sadie. Come to say goodbye to you. No. They're going to put your things aboard the junk no, for you. No. Why doesn't Mr. Davidson come? Where is he? Where is he? See if there isn't a coat or something in that room. That old peeler's got her like she's trans. We're taking her whether she wants to go or not. Oh, they're, they're taking my things. They mustn't take my things. Sadie, don't. Someone will hear you. Oh, let me go. Go away. Oh, handsome, why can't you let me be? Don't you see, Sadie? You ain't yourself. I am. I am myself. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Mr. Davidson, the holy man, is different from you and me. He's made me different. I've been born all over again, handsome. Can't you see? Yes, I see, and I see something else. Remember I told you if you ever needed a friend, I'd be here? Well, you need a friend right now. You're not going to San Francisco. You're going to Sydney. Sadie, out there you got your whole life before you. We'll go away where this rain or anything else can't bother us. Just you and me. Like Lefty and Maggie. 50-50. You'll be Mrs. Tim O'Hara. It's Sydney and us. The whole works against the penitentiary. And I'm taking you whether you want to go or not. No. No, you mustn't. You mustn't. I'm saying that, I tell you. You'll send me to hell. Mr. Davidson. Mr. Da Seems I got here just about in time. All evening, I had a peculiar feeling you were in danger. Sadie, don't pay any attention to him. I'm sorry for you, O'Hara. What you are trying to do is a serious offense. What you're trying to do is make a hyena cry. I'm trying to abduct Sadie Thompson. You've made an attempt to defeat the law. It's likely to go hard with you. That's my lookout. What kind of a man are you anyway, picking on this poor kid here? Getting her so she's half crazy. Send her so she'd have to go back to prison. You're one choice specimen, Davidson. I'll say that for you. They don't make your kind every day. You are a reckless, headstrong man, O'Hara. You are breaking barracks and attempting a high-handed crime. You defy the authority of state and God. You cannot go on the way you are going, and I shall see to it that you do not. Begging your pardon when I ask what you think you're going to do about it? Get back to your barracks as fast as you can and report here to me tomorrow after Miss Thompson is gone. <laughs> Where do you get these ideas, anyway? If it's good advice you want to ladle out, keep it. On such rare moments as I think I think for myself. Oh, this is not helping your case. Watch what you say. I'm here to watch out that Sadie don't make any fool breaks. You gotta do some setting with me before she does any sailing. You're wrong. I know what I'm doing. I'm sorry, but I see clear. See clear? Why, he's got you so it's like you don't. I see what you don't see. What's happened to me don't happen to everybody. I was nothing. I was nobody. Now I'm something. I'm somebody. It's a wonderful thing to know you're being made of some account. The only thing I can't see is how it's happened to me. Is, is that the way it is, Sadie? Yes. What do you want me to do? I don't want you to do anything. Except, just don't say anything more. All right. I'll tell the boys to bring your things back. Sadie, if, 
if you and me never see each other again, I want to say this. I'll never forget you. Ever. If you'd like, I'll come back tomorrow and put your things aboard the boat for you. If you want me to. Don't blame O'Hara, Mr. Davidson. It was all my fault. No, my poor child, it is not your fault. In the last few days, you have become very close and dear to God. He has tested you and found you true. Tonight, he sent the devil to tempt you, but you thrust away the devil. Once your soul lay like a stagnant pool in the lowest pit of the deepest valley. But tonight, it has lifted to the sun, cleansed, glorified as the reign of heaven. When you're here, everything's clear. Everything's all right. But when you're away, I'm afraid. I get to thinking of how wicked I used to be. And I just can't believe it's all forgiven. The days aren't so bad, but it's the nights. Then I began to think and wonder if they're bad now. What are they going to be like when you can't come to me anymore, when I'm alone? When you are alone, my strength will come to you through prayers, which will always be on my lips. Little by little, you yourself will go stronger, surer, and presently the time will come when sin and terror will be powerless to penetrate the great love that God has wrapped around you. Then will you be redeemed, the kingdom and the glory will be yours. Yes. Yes. When you talk like that, I'm not afraid. That old life I led don't belong to me at all. It wasn't me. It was someone else. When I feel like that, Mr. Davidson, does it mean I'm redeemed? Yes, Sadie. Tomorrow will be a very busy day for you. You'll need all your strength. You must try and get some sleep now. No. But if I wake up tonight and get afraid, can I call you? When I hear you call, I will come. I'm very tired. Hello, Horn. You still up? Yep. Reading. Want anything? No, I'm off to bed. There's an uncanny concentration about the rain tonight. Mm, perhaps. Everybody in? Davidson's still out. Can't sleep. <laughs> Can't sleep, eh? As uneasy dreams, his wife tells me. Good night. Good night. Everything goeth, everything returneth. So rolleth the wheel of existence. Everything dieth, everything lost the forth again. So runneth the year of existence. Ah, thus spake Zarathustra. Mr. 
Davidson. Oh, Miss Thompson, what are you up for? I couldn't sleep. This rain and those drums. And then thinking about tomorrow. I don't seem to be able to do much by myself, do I? Not yet, maybe, but every prayer is going to make you stronger. This time tomorrow, I'll be on the sea. I don't suppose we'll ever meet again. Not in this life, Sadie, probably. I'll be in prison three years. That's a long time. What'll I do when I come out? What'll I be? For hours and hours, I've been wondering. Out there in the rain, I walked and wondered, too. The darkness was full of eyes. I saw things I never saw before. I looked into the awful groves of Astro herself. Sadie, you don't have to go back to San Francisco. What do you mean? Just that. Didn't you tell me I had to make a sacrifice? Yes, but I repeat, you don't have to go back unless you truly want to. But I do want to. I haven't got anything else to offer. It's the only thing I've got to give. And I want to give it. I thank thee. I thank thee. Why do you say that, Mr. Davis? Because you said what I knew you'd say. My every prayer has been answered. I prayed that there might come into your heart so passionate a desire for this punishment, which you now lay as a thank offering at your Redeemer's feet, that even if I offered to let you go, you would refuse. I hope I'll be strong enough to go through with it right. From now on, you will be strong. There's to be no more fear. Radiant, beautiful. You'll be one of the daughters of the king. That's what you are now, Sadie, one of the daughters of the king. Radiant, beautiful. I think I'll go now. Try to get to sleep.
Davidson. He isn't dead, is he? Throat's cut. Been dead for several hours. Suicide. I must tell Mrs. David. No, I'll go back and tell her. I hate to do it, but I guess she knows something already. She heard the boys calling for you. Better hurry. Mm. I wonder why he did it. Where's Miss Thompson? How did you know about it? One of the boys told me. I came over here as fast as I could in case Sadie needed me. You don't think there isn't any chance of Sadie being mixed up in this, is there? No, he did it himself. I hope they don't bring him in here. I don't like men that die that way. They don't rest easy. Wait a minute. Pretty cool, I'll say. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm glad I didn't have to tell her. I wonder how she'll take it. I wonder... Now what? Listen to that. You see? She don't know yet. Man, why is she playing it? One of us only wouldn't tell her what's happened. She hasn't touched that thing since Davidson went after her. What's she playing it now for? I don't know. Look here. Last night, she was frightened and all in about going back to San Francisco. Why is she playing that thing the first thing this morning when at noon she's going on a journey she's afraid to make? Why? How should I know? What do you infer? I'm not inferring. Who's going to tell her? You? It'll come better from you. Oh, all right. Miss Thompson? Yeah? What is it? Let me in. It's Horn. Oh, no, you don't. Stay where you are. I'll be out in a minute. It's very important, Miss Thompson. Okay, coming right up. Hello, Horn. What's going on? Hello, handsome. What are you doing up so early? Sadie. Surprised to see me all dolled up, huh? Well, why not? I had to put on my best this gay and glorious morning, didn't I? Besides, I'm radiant. Beautiful. You didn't know that, did you? Hardly believe my eyes when I saw that sun this morning. Do I feel fine? I do. I'd race you down to the beach if it wasn't for these pesky heels. Sadie, turn off that photograph. Why? They'll be back any minute. Who? Mrs. Davidson. And why should I turn off the phonograph? Because Mrs. Davidson's coming back. I'm not concerned with what Mrs. Davidson thinks, or for that matter, with what Mr. Davidson thinks. My advice to him is to pin on his wings and try the air. Joe, turn off that phonograph. Stay out of my room, Joe. That phonograph stays on. Sadie, something has happened. You bet something's happened. You men, pigs. Sadie, Davidson's killed himself. What? They found him on the beach this morning with his throat cut. Then I can forgive you. I thought the joke was all on me. But I see it wasn't. Joe, please. No offense to you and that last crack I made, handsome. Oh, that's all right. I'm going to Sydney with you, 
if the invitation still holds good. Let's go. I understand, Miss Thompson. I'm sorry for him. And I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry for everybody in the world, I guess. 